For the last few weeks, I've been testing a brand new Sony camera. This camera can shoot 4K, 60 frames per second at 10 bits. Now, if you hear that, you might be thinking, oh, you're shooting with the a7S III. That's not the case, actually. In fact, the camera that I've been using for the last few weeks is this one right here. This right here is Sony's brand new flagship phone. It is the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. The stats coming out of this phone make it a dream camera for all you videographers and photographers out there, and that's why I bought this camera. It has a triple lens setup on the back. It has a 16 millimeter f2.2, a 24 millimeter f1.7, and a 70 millimeter f2.4. Now, these lenses in combination can get you everything from ultra wide all the way down to telephoto. And one of the greatest things about this phone is it actually comes preloaded with Sony's custom video and photo apps that try to make it act like an actual cinema camera and an actual professional photography camera. Now, of course, this isn't gonna be competing with your cinema cameras and it's not even gonna be really uh, competing with your DSLR or your mirrorless camera. But what this does is it transforms your phone that you carry with you every day into a more professional device so you can get better photos and better videos right from your pocket. Here's just a little bit of footage that I filmed with this phone over the last couple weeks to give you guys an idea of the level that this phone is performing at. Now, nothing was sharpened, nothing was graded. This is exactly how the footage looked right out of the phone. tell me you aren't the least bit impressed with the footage that came out of this phone. And keep in mind, this is not graded, it's not sharpened. So if you did do a little bit of grading and a little bit of sharpening, you can expect to get even better results out of this phone. Now, one of the downsides is that, uh, you know, of course, with the great performance, you're also gonna be getting high prices. And this is a flagship phone from Sony, so you can also be expecting to pay flagship prices. So. Right off the bat, this phone was $1,200. Um, but it also comes with Sony's wireless earbuds. And um, also, I got my stimulus check and I wanted to stimulate the economy, so I bought this phone. Now, in a little bit, I'm gonna be taking the footage from the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II and comparing it to the Sony A6400. The reason that I'm choosing the A6400 is because, number one, that's a camera I have access to. Number two, it has a very similar price. The A6400 is a $1,000 camera if you have it paired with the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens. And then if you were to get an equivalent amount of device storage, this has 256 gigabytes. So if you were to get a 256 gigabyte SD card and put it in that camera, you would be looking at about an equivalent price of $1,200. 
And finally, the A6400 is also capable of shooting HLG, or Hybrid Log Gamma, which is a pseudo HDR mode that this phone shoots in standard. But first, I do want to give you a few stats about this camera because they are impressive and as a photographer and videographer, this camera fits exactly what I wanted in a phone. And this is honestly the first flagship phone I've ever had. So this is kind of special for me to have something like this. First, I'm going to go over the display. The display is a 4K OLED 21 by 9 aspect ratio, meaning it's an ultra wide display that can also display HDR content. And the reason that's so important is that because this phone can also shoot 4K 21 by 9 footage, you're gonna want a display that matches all of that footage. The photo specs of this camera are also very impressive on their own. Of course, you still have the same 16 millimeter, 24 millimeter, and 70 millimeter lenses on the back each one of them sporting a slightly different sensor size, the largest one going to the 24 millimeter lens and the smallest one going to the 70 millimeter. And each one of these sensors also has phase detect autofocus, making it very fast and very accurate. There's also a 3D time of flight sensor on the back array of the camera. And what this sensor does is it helps calculate fast moving objects to ensure fast focus. The number one reason I got this phone was actually for the photo capabilities. This phone can actually shoot raw photos. They come in as .dngs and you can edit them in Photoshop or Lightroom or Lightroom Mobile right on your own phone and you can export them to wherever. And the photos actually look very good. I'll leave a link in the description with raw photos from this camera and also a little bit of footage ungraded, uncolored directly from the camera so you can check it out yourself. So check it out in the description. It'll be down there if you'd like to check them out. So if raw photos aren't your thing, then you're in luck because if you don't want the raw photos, you can switch over into JPEG mode. And in the JPEG mode, each one of these cameras can shoot 10 frames per second or on the 24 millimeter camera, you can shoot up to 20 frames per second in burst mode. And that includes the eye animal autofocus, the human eye autofocus, and you get that 3D time of flight sensor too, which in those huge burst modes will keep everything in focus perfect. So if you have your dog running towards you at the beach, it's going to ensure that you get some of the best focus. Now, of course, it's not like there's some huge depth of field that you have to overcome on these little cameras and little sensors, but it does help in some of those close autofocus situations. And I'll tell you what, I've been very, very impressed by both the burst modes and the raw photo modes of this camera. All of these advanced features like the raw photos and high burst photo modes are all available through Sony's Pro Photo app, which is preloaded onto the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II. And when you open this app up, you'll be greeted with a very familiar Sony setup. You have the standard display with all of the settings on the back where you can change shutter speed, ISO, white balance, AF spots, all of that stuff. And you can even go into the menu to tinker a little bit more. And you also have manual mode, shutter priority, program, and auto mode that will help you shoot a little bit quicker because it is a little bit difficult to change all the settings on this phone when you're just trying to take some photos when you're walking around not really being that serious. Now on the video side, you access all of the advanced features through Sony's Cinema Pro app. And the Cinema Pro app is supposed to be mimicking some of Sony's cinema level cameras. When you open up the Cinema Pro app, you'll notice it looks a lot different than the Photo Pro app, but all of the same settings that you want to change are still available to be changed in this app too. You can change the shutter speed, which has now been changed to shutter angle. You can change ISO, white balance, manual focus, autofocus, all of that stuff but there's a brand new setting that you can change now called looks and in the looks you can have it be a very standard look or you can have something like venice cs which is a look that is supposed to be emulating some of sony's higher end cinema cameras and that's actually the one that i've been shooting pretty much everything on it looks the flattest and i think it kind of looks the most pleasing to the eye across a more general spectrum of uh, of scenes. So like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, 
you can shoot 4K 60 frames per second at 10 bit on this phone. Now, the 16 millimeter and the 70 millimeter cameras are limited to just 24 frames per second. And the 24 millimeter one is the camera that can shoot 60 frames per second. So if you wanna shoot some slow-mo, you can shoot the 4K 60 on just the 24 millimeter, which honestly, I don't really need to shoot any more than that because I'm just using this to shoot around and this isn't gonna be a serious work camera. So at the end of the day, it is a drawback, but it's not that big for me. If you are interested in seeing some of the raw footage coming out of this camera, check the links in the description because I will have a Google Drive link available to download 4K 24 frames per second and 4K 60 frames per second down in the description. All of it's gonna be unedited, raw. You can take your pics of it, you can download it all, check it out. See if your computer can even handle some of the footage because it is a little bit heavy. So how does something like the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II compare to a Sony camera like the A6400? Now, the reason I chose this camera, again, is because they are comparable in price. This shoots HLG, just like the phone does, and also I have the A6400, so why not bring them out and go shoot? So the way I did this test, it's not super scientific, but I brought them both out to Balboa Park here in San Diego, I mounted the phone to the top of the camera and I mounted those to a tripod and I tried to get them as close as possible. You'll notice not every shot matches exactly but you can get a pretty good idea of how these two compare and also you'll notice that the dynamic range of the phone is not as good as the A6400 so I had to kind of make a choice on some of the shots whether I wanted the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights to match as close as possible, but I tried. So here's a little bit of footage. Check it out, I'll mark it down below which one's which, and you let me know which one you think looks better. When you're actually comparing these two, you'll notice this is fairly close to how this one performs. Of course, this isn't going to be something that you bring out to a wedding or bring on any serious shoot, but if you're just out at the park or something, you're going to get crazy good footage from this phone. Now you will notice that the dynamic range of this camera, of course, doesn't compare to this one, and you'll notice the coloring is also a little bit different. However, because this one is 10-bit, you can do a little bit of finessing to try to get them to be pretty close. Um, I will overlay a little bit of footage right here just so you can get an idea. But when you play around with the Sony Xperia 1 Mark II, when you play around with the footage from it, you'll actually notice that you can work it pretty decently. However, one thing I will note, in the shadows for the phone, they break up really easily. So you're gonna wanna get that exposure as close as possible. It does make it very difficult, I know it does, but you have to try to get the exposure as close as possible to make the image look as good as possible, which is easier said than done when the dynamic range is so small. You get the highlights clipped and then you try to brighten it up and then you lose the shadows. So this isn't gonna work great 
in every situation, but you'll still get excellent, excellent footage. Another thing I noticed is that some of the footage can look a little bit soft depending on which lens you're using. And you can actually push the sharpening pretty hard on this without looking over sharpened. So I would say on all of the footage, if you're editing this on like Premiere or something like that, ride the sharpening pretty hard and you'll get some excellent looking footage. So now I'm gonna talk about a few of the downsides of the phone because of course there are a few. Now the downsides actually aren't anything with how this operates as a phone because it operates fantastic, but I'm just going after kind of the pro video and pro photo features of this camera and how they could be improved. And also to give you guys a realistic expectation of what you are receiving when you buy a phone like this. So like I mentioned, the dynamic range on some of the photos and some of the videos isn't as good as you would expect from like a mirrorless camera or DSLR, which honestly isn't saying a lot because this is just a phone at the end of the day. But what I tried to measure, and of course it wasn't the most scientific way of measuring it, I tried to measure the dynamic range of the sensors in both the photo and video modes, and I kind of ended up in the general area of around 11 to 10 stops of dynamic range, which for a phone is probably excellent. I've never tested any other phones to check the dynamic range, but in comparison to DSLR, it's just not really the same, where nowadays you're getting 13, 14, 15 stops of dynamic range, whereas this phone, you're just not getting that many. But it's a phone. You can't be expecting some A7S III level quality out of something like this. My next biggest complaint is, honestly, I would consider the most serious complaint, and that is that with the 16 millimeter, the 24, and the 70 millimeter lens, none of them match. Of course, they aren't gonna match in terms of focal length and you know, with different focal lengths, you're gonna expect different qualities. However, each one of the sensors is actually physically different and have different features. Just like I mentioned before, the only camera that can do 4K 60 and the only camera that can do the 20 frames per second burst is that 24 millimeter lens. That 24 millimeter has a bigger aperture. It also has bigger photo sites because the sensor is also physically larger. So when you're switching between cameras, like in the video mode, the exposures are changing, the sharpness is changing. So like on the 16 millimeter lens, the image is noticeably softer than it is on the 24. So it would have really been nice to see Sony include the same sensor to try to get the same image quality and same capabilities out of each one of those three cameras. So it's not something you have to think about or feel like you're giving up by switching to the wide angle. Because maybe on the wide camera, I do want to be shooting 20 frames per second or slow motion or on the 70 millimeter, maybe I'd like to do it on that one. So it does make it a little bit of a bummer that you can't count on the quality being equivalent between those three cameras. So my third and final complaint about this phone has to do with its video mode. Now, typically when you're shooting a video project, you wanna be keeping your shutter speed or shutter angle fairly consistent throughout the whole project. But when you're shooting video with this phone, because you have, number one, a fixed aperture, and you have a very limited dynamic range, it's very difficult or impossible to get a shutter speed or shutter angle that you need. And in fact, in broad daylight, even when you crank the ISO as low as it'll go, it's almost impossible to get properly exposed images on this phone, which actually led me to a cheapy little fix, which is basically gluing a variable ND filter to uh, the front of a cheap case. So now all I have to do is just pop it in and, um, Boom, variable ND right on the front, which honestly is pretty goofy and probably a little bit overkill for a phone, but I did wanna test it out um, and I actually did get some pretty good results from this, um, just going out and shooting with a variable ND on a little gimbal, but that was my biggest com complaint and this was my answer of how to fix that, gluing a variable ND to the front of it to be able to get properly exposed and also nice uh, motion blur on 
all of my images, even in broad daylight. So that was it. I think it looks pretty silly. But what do you guys think about this phone? Of course, it's overkill. It is way too expensive. There are some limitations and downsides to the, the phone and the camera apps. But overall, I think that this is, at the time being, one of the best phones you can get if you are a photo or video enthusiast like myself. And overall, the reason I got this phone is because I carry it every day with me and I wanna have access to shooting the best photos and videos that I can and being able to shoot raw photos right out of my pocket or being able to shoot you know, cinematic looking footage whenever I want is a huge plus to me and it's just not cutting it on some of my old phones. So that's my justification for buying it. Of course, it's not enough justification for a lot of people out there and uh, honestly, I cringe at the thought of thinking that uh, I did spend what I spent on the phone. However, it's worth it to me because I do shoot a lot of photos, I shoot a lot of videos and sometimes I just don't wanna carry this around with me. So again, let me know down below, do you have any questions about this phone? Do you have any questions about the photos or videos? Or if there's a shot in here that you didn't see me post uh, in the Google Drive link down below, let me know if you wanna see it and I'll just upload it there so everybody can have access to it. So I do wanna thank you guys for watching this video because this actually was one of my more intricate videos because I did have to shoot a lot of test footage for photos and videos so leave a like if you can it does mean a lot because i did actually put a lot into this video even though maybe it doesn't seem like it but uh, i do appreciate you guys watching the entire video and i will see you on the next one